Hi, my name is Christian from Solotech Solutions. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the flat pattern capabilities of sheet metal parts using SolidWorks. As you can see, I've opened up already a part with two predefined sketches. I'm going to apply a lofted band between those two sketches um, to create a sheet metal part. Note, in order to flat pattern these sheet or in order to flat pattern these sheet metal parts, the circles have to be cut and there needs to be a small gap um, available. Same for the top circle. Fit it back into my screen, create a lofted band, select my true profiles, and SolidWorks will create a sheet metal part from there. Can select the thickness, just leave that at one, and now it will also also give me the option how many band lines I want to have. Just select six for now, click OK. And now SolidWorks converted this into a sheet metal part. Now, SolidWorks also has the capabilities of flatten out this part, doing that just by flattening here top bar. You can see my band lines that I've just selected. Um, I've selected six, you can count them. Four here, one there, one there, make six. Um, you can change the sketch colors if you want. And I can show you the band lines over here. You can also see the bounding box over here. SolidWorks has the capabilities of showing you how big the bounding box is. Um, back to my normal part over here. You can see that these circles are aligned vertically together. Um, they don't have to be. So continuing onwards to my next part. I have the same sketch over here. Again, the circles are split. So there's a small gap between both circles and they're offset from each other. And um, this is not a problem for SolidWorks at all. I can still select both sketches. SolidWorks is still able to create a lofted band. Again, instead of um, adding the number of band lines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the maximum deviation, set that to 0.5 mil, and click OK. Now SolidWorks will make sure that the maximum deviation is only 0.5 when I flatten out my part. Um, the maximum deviation is how much the approximate banding, due to the fact that it's a chatter band, will deviate from the smooth shape. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to flatten this part out, like so. And we can now see that SolidWorks has no problems at all flattening this part out and it's created the band lines for me. What I can do is per band, just change this color quickly to red so we can see them. And now there's some more band lines over here. What SolidWorks can do is it can show you the um, deviation per band. So if I click band deviation over here, it can show me for all the bands. And I can select maximum deviation only if I want to. It will show me the maximum deviation over here, which is 0 0.04 of a millimeter. So that's great. Now, again, you're also not restricted to only two circular profiles. I've prepared another sketch over here, which we've got a square profile. And we're going to make a sketch, of, and we've got a circular profile over here. Again, I'm going to apply a lofted band to create a transition and a sheet metal part. Just make sure that the sketches are ripped or that there is a small little gap. You can change this um, dimension as long as it's a small gap. So it can be 0.1 of a mil. I think in my case I just used one millimeter. Cradle of the band, select the profiles, and SolidWorks will create um, the part for me. Now, you can select the number of band lines again. Bump that up to six, click OK. And we've got a sheet metal part here um, with a square to a round. Looking at it in its flattened form, SolidWorks is trying to calculate it, and we can see now that we've got our band points here as well. Now, if I open up this design journal, there's a little picture up here that actually shows you again what the maximum deviation is. So, because we're using a chatter band, we also have a, always have a little deviation over here. Um, so, we've got a smooth line over here and the actual line. And um, that's created by the bands over there. Now, closing this off. Again, SolidWorks is no problem flattening this out. My last part that I want to demonstrate for you is a bracket. So again, this is a more realistic part that people um, well, or customers will actually manufacture. Um, no problems here to flatten this out either. In its flattened part, 
and um, we've got my band lines over here as well what I can do is I can just save this part now save this part out and create a drawing from the spot Put it just on a drawing sheet over there make it a nice big size See, size should be fine alright add the flat pattern it's formed on there might change my scale here to one on one make things a bit bigger um, and you can see that the notes and band lines here um, are already added now I'm just going to hide them for now go inside my properties and don't show um, sheet metal band notes already added some dimensions in there as well which I don't really need so I'm just going to move them out I've got my flat button part over here now note that I still have the option to show the bounding box which determines the maximum size of the part or actually to manufacture it now another functionality in SOLIDWORKS is that I can actually add a band table over here so instead of using the band notes which is pretty messy you can also use band table choose how you want to label your um, how you want to label your lines ABC or 1, 2, 3 I'm just gonna go for ABC click OK place my band table next to that you can now see that my band lines are actually um, have um, letters next to them which correspond to the letters here at my table my table showed tag A up direction 30 degree angle with an inner radius of 0.13